by David P. Ballstar Metro Vancouver Choose, June 19, 2018 Vancouver, when a country's treatment of prisoners runs afoul of an international law officially dubbed, the Nelson Mandela Rule, after the South African leader imprisoned 27 years, it raises troubling questions, a Vancouver-based rights group argued Tuesday. So when the BC Supreme Court struck down Canada's practice of holding thousands of its prisoners in solitary confinement for purely administrative, not disciplinary, reasons. It ruled Ottawa had breached not only its charter rights but also the UN standard minimum rules for the treatment of prisoners. J. Aubrey, Litigation Counsel for the BC Civil Liberties Association BCCLA, at the Rights Group's Vancouver offices on Tuesday, David P. Ball, Star Metro, that's the international standard for the treatment of prisoners. J. Aubrey, litigation counsel for the BC Civil Liberties Association, told the Star in an interview Tuesday. It's basically the minimum standard by which anyone can treat prisoners without it being considered torture, yet somehow we continue to ignore the agreement which Canada signed on to. The BCCLA launched a constitutional challenge to the widespread practice of administrative detention, or solitary, in Canadian prisons in early 2015. The BC Supreme Court, in a landmark ruling this January, declared the practice a violation of prisoners' charter rights, particularly because of segregation's disproportionate impact on Indigenous inmates and well-documented harm to their mental health. In February, the federal government filed an appeal of the historic ruling, the first of its kind in Canada, which would have forced Ottawa to draft new legislation governing administrative segregation. The government said it needed clarity on the issue from the courts. This week the BC Civil Liberties Association and the John Howard Society of Canada have filed a response to the federal government's appeal of the court ruling. The Correctional Service Canada argued it needs to maintain the practice to ensure the safety of inmates under its care and guards, who in recent years have raised concerns about growing risks they face in overcrowded jails. Canada's Attorney General argued in its defense that Indigenous inmates are only overrepresented in solitary confinement not because of discrimination, but due to Aboriginal social history factors such as entrenched violence and gang affiliation. Leask summarized in his ruling. The government contends, the statutory provisions authorizing administrative segregation, and the application of those provisions, mandate regular and repeated individualized assessments of inmates, as well as particular measures to accommodate the unique needs and circumstances of Aboriginal inmates, the lawsuit, which BCCLA filed with. Prisoner Welfare Group The John Howard Society challenged a type of solitary confinement called administrative segregation, which CSC defines as separating a prisoner to prevent association with other inmates in instances that aren't the result of a CSC disciplinary decision. That sets it apart from disciplinary segregation, in which a prisoner is thrown in the hole for breaking prison rules. In the latter cases, inmates are allowed legal counsel and there is oversight. Administrative segregation, wrote Justice Peter Leask on Jan. 17, is a form of solitary confinement that places all Canadian federal inmates subject to it at significant risk of serious psychological harm, including mental pain and suffering, and increased incidents of self-harm and suicide. Correction, an earlier version of this story incorrectly stated the federal government launched its appeal this week. It was launched February 16, with files from the Canadian press. David P. Ball is a Vancouver-based reporter covering democracy and politics. Email him or follow him on Twitter, at David Ball Top Stories, delivered to your inbox, new N-E-W-S-L-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-A-D-L-I-N-E-S-S-I-G-N-Up.